all right welcome back to another video so in this video we're going to go ahead and talk about serialized user and deserialized user methods um so in the last episode uh, i pretty much told you all about this error um that we kind of like hinted that was going to happen uh so this error failed to serialize user into session so the reason why this is happening is because right now we're trying to authenticate the user but we're not done yet because we need to take the users uh we need to take the context of the user and serialize it into the session but what exactly does that even mean so what we need to do and this is what password does is all it does is it modifies the session and you can see that this stack overflow uh post which i will link in the description but you can easily google this if you just type in passport serialize versus deserialize but i'll leave it in the description for so that you all can read uh, about this post right but what passport does underneath the hood is it modifies the session object for us and more specifically what it'll actually do is it'll update the rec.session property okay and it'll attach uh, specific fields for us and typically those fields are going to be based off of what we want to actually save to the session so obviously you don't want to save literally everything you only want to save certain things maybe such as like a card id or the user id you don't want to save like stuff like passwords or sensitive information okay so this is where the serialized user function comes in the serialized user uh is used to save specific data to the rec.session object now with deserialized user deserialized user takes the data that we serialized into the session and it needs to use it to somehow retrieve the actual original a record from the database typically the user and they explain a little bit more over here so they give you an example where they are pretty much passing in the user id inside the serialized user function inside the callback function of serialized user okay because the first parameter is going to be the user and the second parameter is going to be done and when you call done uh, it's the same function as this uh as this uh as this function over here inside our verify function for our local strategy. It's the same exact type of function. It takes in an error, if there are any, and then it's gonna go ahead and pass in the user ID, okay? When you pass in that user ID, you're basically saying, let's serialize the user ID into the session, okay? And then what happens is whenever the deserialized user function, the callback function is called, the first argument is going to be whatever you passed in literally right over here as a second argument for our done function inside the callback of serialized user so if we pass in the user object instead of the user id this argument over here the first argument for deserialized user would be the user object okay there is actually a comment down below where they did mention that you could put the whole user object uh, but they also say that there could be some uh, side effects too so in our example we're only just going to pass in the user id Okay, so let's go ahead and actually implement these two functions and then we'll write some logs so that way you can actually understand the whole flow of everything. Okay, I know it might be a little bit confusing, but don't worry, I promise you uh, after we see this example, it'll answer a lot of your questions. So inside our local.js file, we're going to reference the passport library and we're going to go ahead and call serialize user. And like in the example that we saw, we're going to pass in a callback function. We're just going to use an arrow function instead. Okay. And the arrow function, uh, the arguments are just going to be the user and done. Okay, so the user is obviously the user object. Done is the same function that we have right over here. It will literally just go to the next middleware. So really, Express is just a web framework that is just made up of a bunch of middleware. Okay, anyway, so we're just going to call done, pass in null for no error, and we're just going to pass in the user's uh we should be able to have a user id i believe because we are using let's see we are using mongodb and mongodb does in fact have the user id property so we should be able to just pass in a uh, user id just fine okay let me go ahead and actually go into my mongodb compass real quick just so that i can go into my database um let's see okay so right over here um you can see right here we have the email, password, create an at, and then the ID. So we should be able to access the ID just fine like this. And we'll know if there are any errors because it will tell us. So we'll go ahead and now implement the serialized user. And this takes in two parameters, okay, similar to our serialized user. Now you'll see that right over here. We're going to go ahead and pass, oh, take in the ID and then the done function, okay? So remember, if I were to pass in a user, 
this parameter would be a user. Whoops, let me actually redo that again. You'll notice how right over here, um, this will be a user, and then this will be the done function. Okay, and like I said, I'll, I'll show you different examples so you can better understand it. Okay, so before we do anything else, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to console log the ID. I'm not going to do anything else. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see what actually happens if we try to log in. So let's click on, uh, so let me do this. Let me actually instead add a curly brace. And let me just console log serializing user. And let's console log the user. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and just call deserializing user. Okay. We'll click send. And you're going to see that error goes away. Now, you're going to see right over here. Uh, if we look at the logs, we first log the email, the password, and then we log authenticated successfully, which is right over here. Then we call done. Okay, so everything in our logic inside this verify function is good. When we call done, that was when we had an error originally, but because we implemented the serialize user function now, you can see that it calls serializing user. We can log the user object. It gives us everything. Okay. Now, uh, for some reason, uh, let's see. Okay, so this is fine. Everything is good. Okay, so you're probably wondering, well, what about deserialize user? Though? Why is that not being called? Now, deserialize user is going to be called upon every single request that you make to the uh, to the server. Okay, so for example, let's say right now, if I want to go ahead and I'll go ahead and just call a get request. I'll, I'll, I'm not call a get request. I'll call one of our endpoints right now. So let's go ahead and do... Uh, let's see, groceries. Uh, let's see, is this going to give us anything? Uh, okay, oh, there we go. Okay, so you're, you're, you'll notice how right now it's not it's not giving us a response. Look at the log. So right now, you can see that deserializing user is being called. And remember, this method is responsible for taking in the ID from the session. It's going to take that ID and it's going to search the database for that user object. And it's going to go ahead and take that object. Okay, we're going to call done. We're going to pass in that user object into that uh, parameter, into that argument in the second the second argument over there, and that's what's going to be used to attach to the request dot user object. Okay, and I'll show you that in just a second. So let's go ahead and call done. Oh, not done. We got to go ahead and actually search the database for the user. So I'm going to go ahead and add an async keyword because we're going to use async await. So we'll go ahead and do, uh, I'll actually use a try catch for this because we are going to be searching the database and there might be some errors. So we'll go ahead and search for the user and we'll go ahead and call user.find by ID because we can't search by email because, uh, I mean, okay, you could serialize the email, but I think it's better to serialize the ID instead. So call find by ID. So this will just search for the user document by ID. And then we'll console log the user. Um, and we'll actually, we'll do this. Um, we'll do this. So what we want to do is I'll actually just return. So if user is found, whoops, if user is found, we'll use a ternary operator. So if user is truthy, we'll go ahead and call done with no error, passing the user. However, if, if the user is not found, we'll call done. Uh, for now, I can actually just I could actually just throw an error. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna do this. Uh, if no user, I'll just do that just to make things simple. So that way, I can just call done, pass in null for the error, because I don't want to pass in a manual error. So we'll just do it like this, okay? And then if there are any errors, we'll just pass in uh, error for the error. Uh, section and then for the user will pass in null because there's no user okay and that's pretty much it so now let's go ahead and log in so we're logged in uh whoops okay so serializing user function was called let's go ahead and call the groceries endpoint uh, so right now it's giving us a 401 unauthorized, and that's okay. The reason why it's doing that is because we have our old middleware function that's protecting these routes. But most importantly is I want you to take a look at this deserializing user uh, method. 
okay um and oh i didn't log user let me actually log that but you can see that deserializing user is in fact being called okay so uh you can see that right over here if i go ahead and try to call this endpoint um let me go ahead and log in right now there we go okay so uh the user is found perfect okay now what do we do next okay what do we do next so let's go ahead and finish up this tutorial so now that we've done the serialized user and the deserialized user functions just fine uh let me go into my router and instead of checking to see if rec.session.user we're going to check if rec.user is truthy instead and you're going to see that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and write a console log and i'll go ahead and say inside groceries auth check middleware okay and i'm going to go ahead and console log rec dot user and you're going to see what that value is going to be so right now if i try to call uh this endpoint you're going to see that we're still going to get an undefined the reason why we're not logged in because we restarted our server right and when we restart our server all of the in-memory session data was cleared so in a later episode we're going to have to set up a session store okay but don't worry about that for now let's just re-log in let's click on send and there we go so you can see that if we're not logged in, it's going to go ahead and give us a 401 unauthorized. But if we are logged in, it's going to give us the resource. Okay. If we look at the logs, you're going to see it says inside grow threes auth check middleware, which is this function over here. When we log rec.user, before when we didn't log in, when we were not logged in, it was undefined. Right. Now it's actually defined. And the reason why it's defined is because literally every single time we make a request, deserialized user needs to take the data that we serialize into the session which is the user id it needs to find the user by that id and then take that user and then attach it to the request object okay if i were to let me actually do this let me actually experiment with uh, experiment a little bit if i were to actually just pass in just like some random data like one two three email hi password lol and then you know just pass in literally anything that i want right and let me go ahead and click send again and let's just log in, click send. You're going to see that when I log rec.user, this is what is actually being uh, logged out. Or not logged out, but this is what's being logged in the console. And that's because whatever we pass in as the user object for this done function is what's going to be stored to the rec.user property. Okay, so I really hope that makes sense because I know when I first learned this, it was so confusing. Okay, but now... Uh, I'm making this tutorial so that you all can understand exactly how this all works. Okay, and like I said over here with our middleware function, uh, we check if rec.user is truthy. If it is, we call next because remember, if rec.user is undefined, that means the user is not logged in. And it makes sense too because right now, if we try to call this endpoint because we just restart the server, so we're not logged in anymore, it sends us back a 401. If we log in again, it's going to go ahead and uh, give us the resource. Okay, so I hope this video made sense. I know it's pretty lengthy, but I wanted to go in depth on this whole concept. So what we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to actually set up a session store because right now our problem, the next problem that we have is if we restart the server, everything is going to be cleared from the in-memory session store. And it makes sense too because memory is volatile. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up a persistent session store. So in, if, if in case the database, or not the database, if in case the server does restart or crash for whatever reason, at least we can have session data that we can just back up and restore it. So that way the user will stay logged in. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and end this video right over here. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in my next episode. Peace out.